Hi, my name is Brett Colby. And I'm Stephen Salmon, just like the fish. You are listening to the Fusion Children's Ministry Podcast Extravaganza. And man, is it hot in here. I don't know what happened to the room we were filming in, but it is warm. It's nice to be here on location, Stephen. Yeah. uh, Beautiful Mordor. Mordor. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. Who knew? Yeah, (laughs) crazy. But as always, today's episode is not sponsored by Bruce Lee, the man, the myth, the legend. R.I.P. R.I.P. Absolutely. Hey, I have something awesome to show you, Stephen. This is something that is called the automatic bullseye. Have you ever played darts before? Uh, yes, I you have. You have a dart, you throw it. No, I have played it before. Oh, okay. The objective <laughs> yeah. is to hit often the bullseye. Not always, depending on the game you're playing. Right. There are ones where you try to um, avoid getting points. Sure. Yeah. This is the automatic dartboard. Yeah. So the dartboard helps out. Dude, that's awesome. And what's cool is if you use this dart, it will make you the world's best dart player because you get a bullseye nearly every time. And even if you don't, it's so really cool. you get the gist. They took that automatic dartboard into a pub and they started throwing some darts. But the thing is, so they had the automatic dartboard that would move, and it's very subtle. So if you're not really mm-hmm. focusing, you don't realize the dartboard is making you throw bullseye every time. Yeah. But they had other darts that no matter where you threw it, they would make you have a horrible score. <laughs> so they went into the pub with all these <laughs> with all these people, and, and they were just throwing perfect games, and nobody else could hit a thing. Oh, my god. So it was pretty, it was pretty awesome. That sounds so funny. I definitely think that that is something awesome. You could make that a fun children's ministry game where the you're, you, the pastor, are always throwing bullseye. Size, and any kid you bring up just is just in there like getting so frustrated. You're like, ah, I guess I'm just better at darts. I think it's a good idea. That's funny. So, hey, today we're not talking about automatic uh, dartboards no. at all. No. In fact, there's no good way to segue into what we're talking about other than to say we are talking about learning styles of children. Oh, that's good. Um, kids, everyone learns in a different way. Most of us, without even well, thinking of a way. There's a few ways that everyone learns. It just might be different than though. Not, okay, that's there, true. No, we all learn like seven billion different okay. ways to learn. Yeah, yeah. A good point. Yeah. There are a few different ways that people learn. Yes. And no two people are exactly the same, except they probably are two people that are exactly the same. Yeah. The point is, the way that you learn is probably not the way that everybody in your children's ministry there you go. learns. Yes, I can agree with that. The problem with that is the, our default mode of teaching and training people is often it's our favorite me. way. Yeah, yeah. So I love this style, so oh. I'm going to teach you that style. That's pretty much it. Did it just get really cold in here? Like before it was like burning hot. It now did. it's like really cold. What is it? Oh, oh, that's because we're here in. We moved locations. To oh, Antarctica. Antarctica. Yeah. yeah. Take a look Antarctica. at the penguins. Yeah. Yeah, so that happened. So Anyways, cute. So that's a good point. We're not dressed enough for this event. No, no we're not. <clears throat> no. All right. Well, yeah, so, everyone learns in different ways. We default to the way that we learn. And that's not usually the way everyone else Yes, yeah. And learning styles is something that you will encounter if you do any training for children's ministries or working with kids. And so it helps to have just a basic knowledge of some different models, ways that people frame this. Yeah. One of my favorites is by a gal named Cynthia Ulrich Tobias. Have you ever heard of a book called The Way They Learn? <laughs> you, you laugh as if you haven't, you don't talk about Cynthia all the time. Let me pull it up for you here on just, uh, Amazon. I mean, Ulrich Tobias. Yeah. That's good. The That's way awesome. they learn. The way they learn. So she puts together just a very basic grid. Oh, and nice. it's, uh, oh, it's kind of one or the other. Good price right now, I was going to say. Yeah. I'm going to say inexpensive. Yeah, it's inexpensive. Yeah. Um, so basically she says this. People either learn as abstract okay. or concrete learners. I'm definitely a concrete learner. Okay, so you're a concrete, yeah. not an abstract. No. So abstract would be kind of all over the place. Yeah. It would be just kind of... Um, Whatever. Yeah. And then those of course, people frustrate me. Yeah, you don't you don't handle that. Two plus two equals four. Not two plus two equals some sort of like philosophy of learning. It equals that they apples want. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that they go around with. Yeah. So you either have concrete or abstract. I like that. Then you also have oh either boy. sequential or random. Which would those? Which one do you prefer? Do you all like right. it laid out? Boom, 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 yeah, boom, boom. Or do you like to, to be, float all over the place? Has to be sequential. Everything so, has to build <clears throat> upon itself. So then, according to Ulrich's model, you would be a concrete sequential learner. Man, that sounds like such like a square. Yeah, that would be <laughs> that would be you. That's me. Yeah, that's why uh, we got the cube. 
I, on the other hand, am totally an abstract really? random. Oh, I love I love approaching ideas abstractly, and I love kind of bouncing all over the place. Gotcha, huh? You know, the 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 problem with any of these models is that you say, oh, I'm a this and I'm nothing else. Mm -hmm. We are all a mix of all of these things. Right, that's good. Yeah. That's really good. And that's, I think, one, one way that we fail when we are kind of discovering our own style. We yeah. kind of put ourselves in a small box. So don't do that. But realize that I'm not a square. You, I like what you're, you're saying. You're not a square. You yes. have there is hope for you. Yes. Uh, realize that um, children in your ministries are either going to really latch on to con concepts um, abstractly or concretely, yeah. and they're going to want to explain to them either randomly or sequentially. Mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of picture that grid. And Greg, I'll shoot you uh, an image of that so you can kind of see that illustrated. Greg so, is our our technician extraordinaire like director, videographer, he's amazing. Yeah, does And then we also them. have the best person ever. The best. The best. That's all we're gonna say about that. There's also another really popular way to look at these, um, and this is a guy named Howard Gardner, if you ever heard of Howard Gardner. Nope. Multiple intelligences? Nope. Okay, so Howard Gardner came up with a theory in the 90s that he called multiple intelligences. When you think of learning styles, you're used to thinking of what hands on. Hands on. Visual. Visual or listening. Yes, those are the three that we all go off of. And that's a great place to start. Yep. Gardner took those and kind of looked in a lot deeper. So here are his multiple intelligences. Are you ready? There's seven of them. Okay. And there's it's been spun off of a bunch of times. So if you Google it, you're going to find a lot of different ways sure. to slice this bread. Uh, visual spatial. Okay. So things that people think in terms of physical space. Um, think of an architect putting a building together. Oh, yeah. Or a sailor trying to get right from point A to point B looking at a map. God bless those people. Bodily kinesthetic, so the use of body effectively. A dancer or a surgeon. Or really? a dancing surgeon. That would be terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> or Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, a lot of coordination, yeah. very self-aware of who they are and where they're at. Don't, Ashley, don't give me that look. He's a very bodily kinesthetic yeah, guy. Like He's a bodybuilder. Yeah. How much more kinesthetic does it get than that? Yeah. Look at her over here. I was like, the... She gave me the look like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. You know, I feel like it's very calm and cool now in this room. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. look, that's, oh, hey. Oh, it's a beach. It's my favorite beach. Yeah. In beach. the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, it's that, it's it's rocky, cool that's uh, Musical, sensitivity okay. to rhythm and sound. That's Ashley. Those people learn a memory verse like this. Oh. That's, not, that's clearly not me. Those that people. was on beat at the same time. <laughs> Everything was perfect there. That was awesome. You have interpersonable, mm. so understanding and interacting with other people. Have a lot of people, they have to socially interact. That's how they learn. If they're not talking to somebody about it, it's not clicking. Is that you? Yes. Okay, that's good. Uh, intra personal, more internally focused. They have, they understand uh, their own interests and goals. They want to think about it. Like they don't learn until they can go home, sit alone by themselves. But and how like, can you think about it if you're not talking it out loud with somebody? You are clearly not an interpersonal thing. <laughs> Linguistic, they use words effectively. Um, has to, they, like the words really matter for them. It sticks like that, in their head. Like that. And then the last one here is logical slash mathematical. So reasoning, calculating. Um, they think conceptually, abstractly, and are able to see and explore yeah. patterns and relationships yeah. between yeah. stuff. Is that you? Yeah. 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 So these are just two basic ways to uh, understand the way kids learn. But I'm wondering, Stephen, just intuitively and intentionally in your ministries, how do you kind of teach something in a way that you're going to appeal to a large group of kids and not just one small group? I think group? we've talked about it before, but we try to hit the same concept in a bunch of different ways. So we'll have like a sketch or we'll have a video that goes over the exact same topic. Our game will go back to what we're talking about. Um, we will go into small groups and then we'll have the large group and we try to hit things kind of those five ways. We want to teach the same thing five times. That's give good. them five repetitions of what it is we're learning in five different ways. Got it, got it. Yeah. And then you would, of course, be ap appealing to a lot of different styles in that format. Yeah, um, and, and and we just, we ho you know, we, what would be the best is one-on-one -on -one with a teacher sure. for every single kid yeah. being able to do this stuff right for their learning style, but we, we, we kind of figured that that hits the most and people, again, kind of like me, I'm going, yeah, I can, I do that one, I do that. They have different ones, so even if a kid kind of, I guess most identifies with one, they will probably pick up some stuff anyway because they have another one yeah. too. One way I think this is most clear in the ministries and events that I get to host is during our response chapels at yeah. camp. So in the evening, we ask the kids to respond to the That's big good. idea of the day. And around the room, we just set up different, I mean, for lack of a better term, prayer stations. That's so good. Some kids, it's writing a letter to God. Some kids, it's drawing a picture. Some, some kids, it's 
saying something, making a proclamation, reading right. a verse, doing a little craft thing. That's good. And when our teams put those together, we're thinking, okay, different learning styles. Yeah. One of these things is gonna click with at least one every kid in this room. Yeah, that's good. But not every station is for every kid. I think one of the biggest things is just being aware that these exist. Because so often we, just like you said, we teach the way that we learn right. and we assume everyone does that. Just by knowing that these are out there, it actually opens up your thinking a little bit and makes you think about, hey, how can I communicate this in one of these ways and makes you more creative, makes you more kind of um, thinking outside the box and stuff. Yeah, we'll throw a link to uh, the way they learn in the description here below. It's a great place to start if you've yeah. never read about it. It's an easy read, Less quick than 10 read. bucks. Yeah, like, you're, you're golden. It's great. So if you have any really creative ways that you appeal to the learning styles of kids, yeah. let us know in the comments below. Yeah. Uh, I'm Stephen Salmon. I'm Brent Colby. See you next time. Thank you.